You know, this is the uh, second of my vlogs on something I felt compelled to talk about is being looking, being 30, 53 and looking like I'm 33 and, and that, and how people react to you when they think that you're younger than you really are, even though I'm not trying to be younger. You know what's interesting? I, I found that by accident. No, actually it was, it was by accident, but I was curious to know what I would find if I typed 50 but look 30 in Google. And there was some article referring to a magazine called Looking Younger Magazine. I'm not making this up. And it was talking about different ways where you could come off younger. <laughs> and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that never occurred to me because I did think about and I've thought about why is it that, for example, the women I dated have tended to be younger than me. Um, 28, 29, 31, you know. And it's not that I'm averse to anyone who's 45 or 55 at all. But what I have discovered is that you can meet someone who's 44 years old and they are just as immature as someone who's 24 and you, they have four kids. Funny how that works. But that was unique to that person. I think more to the point, that person played a lot of games. And they never got that part of them out of the system. Now, if you saw the person I'm talking about, tall, drop-dead, gorgeous, whew, uh, had a confidence problem that I, I'm very proud that I helped, I talked her out of that, you know. I, I take personal credit for her boosting her herself to where she is today. Bing! But I digress. Um, what I have found is, yeah, it's, um, it's wild how, how much of a, pre, of, a, of a premium people put in to how old you are. And if you don't meet that, it's, oh my God, you're this, oh, oh. I, age is just a number. It really is. And what we need to do, and I think we're doing it, I'm not saying anything that is earth shattering or path breaking. What we need to do is, is come to a point where we appreciate the unique qualities of individuals. You know, we're less worried about, and I think we're coming to that, but it's not uniform. We're less worried about how old they are rather than what qualities they bring to the table. I understand that. I mean, there's a friend of mine, if I can use his name, Mark Cantor, who and I were talking about these problems in tech, and I think he's always wanted to make a home for those in tech who are in our age group who are forgotten, which is the fascinating problem. You have those who start up companies and they're 20, they're 25 and because they're just coming of age as adults, boy, sometimes they act like there was no earth before them. Well, technically there wasn't because they weren't around, right? But I was. A lot of them don't ask questions. A lot of people don't ask questions. And even in government, like with Oakland today, and even the mayor, she's in my age bracket, but she doesn't embrace the opinions of the mayors that have come before her and they're all alive you have a great round table right and, and get wealthy from their points of view intellectually wealthy she doesn't do that it's funny how we as a society don't seem to prize tapping into the experiences of others who've been there before us and i'm very proud that i'm aware not to do that at least I think I am. It's like I'm certainly cognizant of that. Okay, but where I sit is in a unique position, and it's it's to as someone says. Oh, as my friend said last week, I I, I love her to death. I met her last week. She's an amazing woman, and I yeah I hope I be able to um, get something going with her. I think I said that in the past video, but um, at any rate. I don't want to cry. The bottom line is, you know, she was saying, well, from that perspective, you look 20. <laughs> She's about 29, okay? Uh, it, 
was funny to me, you know. Um, I, I, I think as a society, we, we we all don't know what's on the other side of passing on. And what's important to me right now is that I'm with my mother. My mom is, she'll be 82 this year. She's 81. She's survived breast cancer since 2005. And my mom is the wisest person I know. And I know that sometimes she worries about, because I have my, I'm an emotional person. You know, I'm up and down. I got through that from her. And I think to my dad as too, but more her, because I spent a lot of time with her. But, um, but she means a lot to me. So it's very important that I'm here for her just to keep her company and help around the house and help where I can in different ways. You know, sometimes just keeping company is enough. Even if she gets mad at me, you know, fine. <laughs> but um, it this isn't, you know, looking this way isn't something that I, I, I just said, hey, you know, I'm going to, do this and everyone's going to think that I'm younger. No, not at all. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Does it smooth my ego to hear, okay, yeah, you look like you're younger? Of course it does. But I'm not. I'm very open about who my age. As I said in the previous video, I've said before, I'm Zinni 62. I was born in 1962. Yeah. But I think beyond me, what we've, what I've seen is for those who don't, have the makeup that causes me to look like this, right? Um, I think it's especially tough for them if they don't have that gauge of the kids, because I don't have kids. Love to have kids. I don't have a life. Love to have a wife. You know, I haven't I haven't had friends who said, hey, Zinni, I want you to meet so-and-so. She would be great for you. You know what I mean? Um, and I haven't had friends who did that. Oh, I won. Susan DeBerry, who I met here in, in the Atlanta area. Great. But that's one person. You know, it's always been, oh, you find somebody. You go to this person. Like, you go online or you go out. And whereas when I talk to people about how they met their wives, it's always within a group of friends or a blind date that was set up for them, right? Uh, or, you know, you get the idea. It was a group and my mom points out, and I think she's right, she says that I've started my own companies, and I, with the exception of the city of Oakland, where I worked for about six years, I wasn't in that corporate environment where I was going to meet someone. You know, I was trying to create my own environments, and I've done that. Um, and so there's a difference. But even with the city, it was kind of like, yeah, didn't quite kind of match up, and you know, you got to be careful with that, too. You know, there's an old saying about, not dipping your pen in the company ink, right? You know, well, the difference, however, is that a lot of guys dip their pen in the company ink, and in a lot of cases, the company ink is the ink that they made or they made with their colleague who happened to be a woman. You know what I mean? It's changed now. And so, because we work so much, what else is there? You know, where else are you going to meet your significant other, your wife? There, okay? And that's it. But and then I think there's another group, I'm just going to be very blunt here, that uh, a friend in Atlanta. I think we've known each other since Texas Arlington. Great friends. But he is, among some people, only see me, oh, you like a white girl. No, it's not that. It's more complicated. Like somebody smart, athletic, confident. Um, and within that rubric, they could be anybody. But the people who think this way, they think only in terms of color, and which means that they don't really think about who I am as an individual, okay? And what I like as an individual. And so they'll consistently try to push the idea that you have to do this to, for us to consider you black. The irony is that that's the same group of people can hang around someone white, and yet they're not telling them, well, you have to do this to be a white person, right? And yet, you know, they have pictures of them with, you know, that white group or couple downtown in Atlanta or in Decatur or someplace, like having a great time. And I'm thinking, gee, uh, those folks don't have to go and 
through the same pressures that I do. Is that right? Of course it's not. It's wrong. Completely wrong. Um, but with all that, you know, it's, it's, it's a great ride. And I think out of this, I think the other thing that's happening now I, to me, now I put my finger on in terms of why I'm getting the positive reactions about how I look, but then it's like, oh my God, you're 53. I'm finally coming of age. I am a late bloomer, folks. I am a late bloomer in life. And I think somewhere spiritually, all this is, is factored in with that, you know, somewhere in there. But my, my central point in all this, is I really think we need to get over the age thing. It's as, it's as bad as the race thing. We all want to live. But you should never penalize us for being older. That's, that, that is massively a bad thing. And not only that, I will tell you this. I look a lot better than some of the guys that I've seen who are half my age. So screw you all. Hey, whatever. I'm not saying get off my lawn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here is the next number two in my series about my channel turning 10. And here comes the next one, which is on my life as a YouTube partner. Because one of my viewers specifically requested that. So here it comes next. <laughs> 